Good morning, folks. Today we see the completion of an electric event four days in the making, the continued dominance of the Earth-facing solar quiet, and a look around the world weather-wise. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, take a peek at the primary eruption threats on our star. Thin, dark ropes are, of course, the plasma filaments. The southern rope has a more Earth-directed position and orientation on the disk than does the northern grouping, which is well up there and much less likely to be geo-effective. The only big eruption on our star the last day took place on the far side. A filament that dared not test Earth hit the launch pad just out of sight and was gone just like that. Now, as we lost him, a new filament began growing, and you can see it towering over the northeastern limb there. If it maintains size, it's one of the biggest ever to turn in the history of this satellite. Earth-facing solar quiet? Is there a mercy rule in the flaring game like in Little League Baseball, I wonder? Big spots either decay or lose all ability to flare once they hit the Earth-facing disk. All the flaring potential is gone up north now as well. Folks, the coronal hole stream hit about 18 hours before I thought it would. That's the yellow speed rise after a brief orange density bump. KP shows global instability in Earth's shield with both the K and Q indices showing level 2 storm conditions at Karuna. Folks, the IMF went wild yesterday. This is a generalized animation, and some of the positive influence likely stream past near Earth space and certainly the nearby negative fields in the area. Remember that whether it's the coronal hole energy or the phi angle, this magnetic character is vital for earthquakes. On the OLR charts, see the China OLR identified two nights ago? It ends up combining with the anomaly just off the Japanese coastline to form a much larger negative anomaly there. And folks, finally the storms weaken and allow the quakes to come back. The first two six-pointers in days straddled that OLR anomaly. This near six-pointer is also significant due to its rare location, and indeed it hit six on a couple readers. Thus completes the first electric event of 2016. Planetary geometry triggered a heliospheric disruption. We all expected that. As the sun erupted, we had two absurd winter northern hemisphere tropical events, one of which is still churning along. Combined with one in the south, it's tough for three strong tropical events to let much of the energy down to the ground. But now that the coronal hole and planets are coming together for Earth factors, we've seen two of the three tropical storms weaken and allowed that energy to hit the lithosphere big quakes returned. Don't sleep on this yet. Mercury conjoins the sun in 36 hours. Website members, we've got two new episodes of Deeper Look for you. If you've been seeing the start of this year, you can see where I'm going with this. It may take a while, but when throwing stones at the throne, one needs to have patience. Going to bring a few boulders with me to Arizona at the end of the month, by the way. Spaceweathernews.com slash OTF. You see the website for our conference there. We've got pressure and radar forecast in our top viewer locations, current global conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.